I have the coolest job in the world because as animators we get to bring things to life in a way that means so much to so many people. Like Bluey and her family. Hi, I'm Beth Durak. I'm a lead animator at Ludo Studio where we bring Bluey to life. Having a good understanding of the basics of physics is really helpful to me as an animator to bring things realistically to life. The thing about this job that I love is that we get to be a part of the magic that makes something come to life. You know, we get to start with absolutely nothing and then create piece by piece something that never existed before. And now you have this living and breathing character. So you might wonder how we create the movement in Bluey. We use cutout animation. So I have a pre-built rig that I can drag around as I need to to create my poses. So if I want Bluey to give us a little wave, I'm going to pull her arm up, go to a new frame, pull her arm down, and I just keep doing that until I have a nice finished animation. Obviously, there's a lot more steps to get it to feel nice and smooth, but here we have a little wave. Working as an animator, it is our job to help create a world using acting and storytelling and real world environments to help create a scenario that feels real and authentic. And to do that, we use physics to help really ground our story and make it feel correct. People might not realize this, but animation is actually based around 12 really simple key points. They're known as the 12 principles of animation. We use those to help base our animations in the science of movement and gravity and physics. Let's take a look at the science behind some of these principles in practice. Here we have Bluey. She's going to do a jump for us. Now this might seem like a simple action, but there's actually a lot of things going on to get to this point. But that's okay, we can break it down. All we have to do is head back to the fundamentals. Here we have an animated ball. This is one of the very first exercises that animators will do when they're just starting to learn how to handle weight and timing and how to create something that feels like it has a presence in a scene. Using animation, we can create the illusion of weight on mass using different visual cues. So what we've got here our first bounce has got a lot of different heights and it hangs in the air a little bit before it comes back down. To give our second ball the illusion of a heavier mass, I have it stop sooner so it feels a little bit heavier and it stretches less so it feels a bit more solid than our first ball. Here we have our secondary object, the tail, following our main object, the ball. This is how we can get some nice energy and nice movement into our animations. I'll show you this in more detail now. So here we are in Cell Action. This is the program that we animate Bluey in. We've got all of the key things that we had in our bounce. So this idea of inertia or momentum is seen in the tail where it has to follow through the energy and the energy has to play out to the end of its movement. This is one of seven balloons that I got to animate in our episode, Mum School. Uh, it's a really great example of how we can take that really simple idea of the bouncing ball and put it into context in an episode. So in this scene, I had to think about not only how one balloon floats and feels as it moves, but how seven of them move when they're being touched by a character, how they might bounce off each other, when they hang in the air, do they swing, are they heavier in a different point? All of those things I had to think about while doing this one simple scene. <laughs> to make sure that we got the action of the balloon right, we, in our very professional studio, had a lot of balloons that we would stand up, we kick these balloons and just observe them, just look at them and see if we were getting that right feeling from a real world balloon into our animated balloons. So here at Ludo, we work in such an incredible team. There are so many different departments that work together to bring Bluey to life. So we start with script, we go to storyboard, then we go to editing. Then from editing, we start to lay everything out. We have our art design, backgrounds, rigging team, layout, animation, VFX, sound and music. One of the episodes of Bluey that I am most proud of is the episode Mum School. Come on, come on. This way to the pool. Is. 
because it takes this really little deceptively simple exercise that you do when you first start out animation and it blows it up to this really incredible technical stage but the episode also has this really beautiful heart and really great storytelling. Animation is really important to me because it's a medium that allows for a heightening of storytelling. You can get emotions across in animation that you just can't get across any other way. Like the animated movies I'd watch as a kid, they really spoke to me in a way that was so different from anything else I've really encountered. And to be able to do that for other people is totally out of this world. If you want to become an animator, I'd really suggest following those 12 principles of animation, just embedding those into your system, and then just observe the world. Your best acting moments, your best flourishes will all come through observation. I guess the ultimate question for me as an animator is how can we get to that next level? How much further can we push animation to get that next most beautiful story?